Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Magnum Martell, and welcome back to another glorious episode of Magnum's Rants. I'm feeling pretty damn good today. I'm feeling pretty spry because I finally hit affiliate on Twitch. It's a damn good feeling. When you work on something for eight long fucking years and get nowhere for so long, it's nice to finally know that things might turn around. So here's the hoping. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. No, today what we're going to talk about is apparently orcs are fucking racist now. These orcs are much stronger than any we've ever seen. They're not orcs, though. Fucking racist. I hope you enjoyed that. It did not take me long to put together, but I am damn proud of that joke. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not kidding you. Earlier this week, we got confirmation, absolute confirmational fact, undeniable truth, that orcs are indeed racist. No, no, not, not that the orcs themselves are racist against everyone else. What, I mean, historically speaking, in fiction, they always have been. No, 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 that they are a racist caricature of individuals of a specific color. You cannot make this shit up, ladies and gentlemen. So, where did this come from? Well, it comes from this, which is, um, in my understanding of it anyway, is that it comes from a new player guide about Dungeons & Dragons. Tell you the truth, I am actually in the middle of playing my first ever Dungeons & Dragons campaign. I am experiencing it for the first time in my life, and I gotta say, I'm having a lot of fun. It's been a good time. It's not something I ever got to do when I was younger, but I was always interested in trying. So the passage in question here is this. Role-playing an orc. Most orcs have been indoctrinated into a life of destruction and slaughter, but unlike creatures, who by their very nature are evil, such as ghouls, gnolls? Gnolls, sorry. It's possible that an orc, if raised outside its culture, could be developed could develop a limited capacity for empathy, love, and compassion. No matter how domesticated an orc might seem, its blood flows, bloodlust flows just beneath the surface. With its instinctive love of battle and desire to prove its strength, an orc trying to live within the confines of civilization is faced with a difficult task. I mean, to me, that just sounds like world building. To me, that just sounds like a good depiction of what we've always seen orcs as in fiction, and that is conquerors, slayers, destroyers who ransack and pillage, destroy, and uh, diddle villages to their heart's content, slaughtering every man, woman, and child of the human race and, or elven races that stand before them. My point is, is that orcs are supposed to strike fear into your heart. You're supposed to know that you're dealing with a bloodthirsty marauder that's going to kick your ass and take your stuff. And then he's going to laugh at you. You know, there's a lot of different versions of orcs throughout fantasy fiction, but the basics are always more or less the same. You're greenish-skinned individuals with some snaggly teeth who are big and burly behemoths. In the world of Tamriel from the Elder Scrolls franchise, they've got you've got the orcs that live in the city that are peaceful and fun-loving like everybody else, but they're never afraid to be the first person to pick up a club and smack a bitch who deserves it. Then you've got the versions in <laughs> The Lord of the Rings, where they are elves corrupted by Sauron's dark magic and turned into an army for him to conquer the world of Middle-earth. You've got the version in D&D. You've got the version of world in World of Warcraft, which are relatively similar, might I add. But my point is that there's always, like, some differences, but the basics are always there. They are a constant, just like elves. You know, when you look at elves in fantasy, they're always written to be elegant, intelligent people who preceded humans, and then, for some reason, humanity kicked their ass. Or they're, like, immortal, or perhaps they're forest-dwelling. There's all kinds of different versions. There's wood elves, high elves, dark elves, snow elves, fucking... You can do anything with fantasy. That's the great thing about fantasy. It's why I love RPG games so much, because there's so much you can do with these worlds. And you can do them your way. And that's one of the things I've come to like about and appreciate about Dungeons & Dragons, is that you can, uh... You can go off of their idea. You can go off of the world they've designed and developed. Or you can fuck it all up and make your own. And that's what I love about it. There's no consistent, this is the only way type thing. But now that I've done my little spiel, let's take a look-see here. Because this whole thing started a couple days ago. I'm actually a little late to the party on making a video on this one. And I'm actually going to talk more in depth about it. Because I love fantasy. I really do. I've got a couple of tweets for you here. One of which is from someone who actually writes the fucking D&D books. And this actually pisses me off. This dude, man. Let, let's, start with, uh, let's start with this lady here. So we've got one here from Mackenzie D. Armas. I have no idea who that is. This is one thing I'll say. Yes, orcs and goblins and elves aren't real. But the people who play the game are. The people who write the game 
are. You cannot draw a line between fiction and reality because they feed one another. It's a constant loop. And you know what? I'm not going to just disagree with that point just because she's a fucking idiot. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I do believe, indeed, that reality is a reflection, or fiction, uh, excuse me, is a reflection of reality. I believe that we design fantasy worlds as a form of escapism. I believe that a writer who is creating a new world can indeed put some of their ideals into parts of it. I see no problem in that as long as you're not stuffing it down my throat. I believe that fiction can be used to commentate on reality. Look at television shows like South Park. They use fiction of their own world to commentate and make fun of our own reality all the time. I believe that fiction can be used to shift the paradigm and change someone's mind. I believe that fiction is one of the most powerful tools humanity has ever created because it gives us both an escape from our harsh reality, but it also gives us something that can be used to teach others. But I also believe very firmly, and I cannot reiterate this point enough, very fucking firmly. Like, I mean, as firm as you can get. We are talking concrete levels of hard. We're talking solid fucking steel right here. That there's nothing wrong with inserting your ideals into a fictional world that you have created. However, I do not like it when you demand your ideals jammed into a fiction that you have nothing to do with. I do not like it when you jam your ideals into a fiction so hard that you are stuffing them so far down my throat, your hand is coming out my ass. I don't care if you express your ideals in your own fictional world that you have created. In fact, I believe that's what fiction can be used for and done properly. But I will not have you telling me how I fucking think in the real world is dependent entirely on fucking fiction. I will not have you telling me that just because you believe something about fiction, then it's automatically true for everyone else. It continues here. As game designers, we're responsible for entrusting that ugly, harmful realities like racial stereotyping do not make it into the fiction. And I strongly disagree. I believe that racial stereotyping has its place in fiction. I believe that it does. If I make a redneck character who likes to drive his truck, fuck his sister, lives in a trailer park, picks up girls at Walmart, and sits on the porch in a rocking chair with a double barrel shotgun, you're not going to bitch about that, are you? No, of course not, because it owns the white man. But if I make a black man character who is a hood rat ghetto gangster wannabe that dies in the first chapter, you're going to flip your lid. Because if they do, and the players see it and use it to justify themselves, the game only reinforces the pain real-life racism shows. Okay, I believe in Morgan Freeman's idea of dealing with racism. How are we going to get rid of racism and Stop talking about it. That is an old clip. It took me a good little bit to actually find it. But anyway, I agree with Morgan Freeman. I think that the more that we talk about the problem, the worse it gets. Yeah, I don't think not talking about a problem in general is going to do anything, but that's not the point. The point is, the more you try to say that everything is racist, the more racist things actually end up becoming, and the more it makes everyone look like a racist, even when they're not. Because for some reason, these people have to make everyone look like an asshole so they can feel better about themselves. Now, I apologize. I'm getting all sidetracked here, and I'm getting riled the fuck up. Let's move on to the next comment. The next one comes from uh, Brandon Leon Gambetta. Uh, I assume I'm pronouncing that right. This is a guy who writes for Dungeons & Dragons. I'm not even kidding you. So here we go. He says, if you think that there's nothing wrong with the way that at Wizards, that's, I think that's Wizards of the Coast actually, continues to reinforce racist shit in D&D, please go ahead and block me now. I have no interest in any conversation with you for you to interact with my design work. Translation, if you disagree with my opinion, I'm going to block you. And you know what? That's what he did. That's what he fucking did. I'm not even kidding you. I'll get to that. Let me keep reading. The harassment by these incels, I hate that fucking word. I firmly believe that anyone who uses the word incel is wrong by default because not only do they not use the word properly, but now they just use it against anyone who disagrees with them. And honestly, you know what? If you use that word just because somebody disagreed with you or criticized a woman in any way, you need punched in your fucking mouth. All these incel sacks of shit is ridiculous. And all TTRPG, that'd be tabletop role-playing game for those who are unfamiliar with the terminology. I feel like I need to 
express that information. Content creators should be calling their following on this. No. No, no, no. It is not the responsibility of a cr content creator to argue with their following. Because that's how you lose your following, Brandon. You should lose your job for thinking that. That's my opinion. I am not responsible for what my viewers do, unless I directly encourage it. Which, by the way, I do not encourage you to interact with these people. I think that you should just avoid these people like the plague that they are. That is entirely your decision, but I will not be held liable if you interact with these individuals. If you're part of the art of a thread agreeing with the people saying, well, maybe saying something is racist is the real racist, examine your life. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, Brandon, you and Mackenzie and everybody else who started this whole thing apparently are the ones who thought, oh my, that might be racist because it could be used to describe a black person. That's your thoughts. Nobody else said that before you. Nobody. Nobody said that until you started this. Nobody thought that. There's a reason that everyone is laughing at you. So this is where he gives a screenshot of the thing I've already read and says this is in reference to a harassment campaign done by people who really want to defend this as not dog whistle racism. First off, if you are blowing a dog whistle at anyone, anyone, you're the problem. You're the bad guy by default. Because you often blow the dog whistle at things that have nothing to do with what you're blowing it about. Orcs have a long history as a stand-in for various racial others. Give me proof. That's all I have to say. Moving on. I'm also not answering trolls. And I request all of you do the same. Just block, block, block. And actually, he blocked me. We'll get to that here. You're seeing part of my comment here on the screenshot. This is all one thread, by the way. He commented all of this in one continuous, like, eight-tweet thread. I had to cut off the parts that were mostly rambling. Hey, if it's just about orcs and orcs are fictional, then why are you coming to my tweets to cry about it? You cannot fucking say something this stupid and then say people are crying because they disagree with you when you yourself are blocking everyone who disagrees with you. Let me tell you something. My opinion on blocking. I'm going to do a whole video about it. But to give you the Cliff's Notes, I believe that if someone is legitimately just being an asshole to you, and they're going around following you place to place, interacting with you repeatedly, you have every right to block them just because they're being a dick. I have no problem with that. If somebody directly insults you by calling you something that you're not okay with, you have every right to block them. If they're breaking the terms of service, you have every right to block and report them. I have no problem with that. I've had to block a couple people. I don't like to do it. I like to use it as a last resort when I can't handle somebody being an asshole anymore and I'm tired of arguing with them or I'm tired of them trying to make me look look bad. I have no problem with it then. But if you're just going to block them just because they disagreed with you, you're an asshole. You're an asshole and you're trying to live in an echo chamber. I'm not okay with that. Anyway, legit, these people think they are ruining my day while literally responding with what, what I called out in the first place. So a translation, you called out racism, so to speak. And they're responding by being racist. Disagreeing with you does not make them a racist, Brandon. Just saying. I'm realizing that most of these people are probably dummy accounts, so I may just mute, but damn, at Wizards, check out the responses if you think you're doing enough. I truly hate this line of thinking. I really do. I truly hate it because it's always these people who do it. It's always these people like Brandon that think that everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is homophobic, that want the company that makes the thing that they are, quote, calling out to do something about its fan base. You would have to be the dumbest human being on the face of the earth to be in charge of this company and go, oh, we need to ban all these people because they disagreed with the opinion, the asinine opinion of one of our employees. That is how you lose money. They do not want to lose money. Money is their goal, Brandon. Money is more important to them than you are. I'm going to tell you that right now. Personally, I think you should lose your job just because you believe that it's their responsibility. You as a creator are not responsible for what your fan base does. You as a creator do not have the fucking authority to remove or ban your fan base. For what they do on other platforms that are not associated with you in any way, or for the opinions that they hold. I don't care what your terms of service says. I don't care what the legality is. You do not have the fucking right. Just because you disagree with their opinion. Now, 
if they go out of their way to do harmful things on your platform, harass people, which, by the way, your communities have a very bad habit of that, Wizards. They really do. I have a story from when I was about 14 being harassed by Magic the Gathering players. Not the point. Neither here nor there. It's called growing up and moving on. It's actually just a memory at this point that I might do on a story time. Not the point. You do not have the right as a company. And Brandon, you need to understand, they do not, do not have the right as a company to ban anyone just because they disagreed with your asinine little fucking soy boy opinion. You're an asshole, Brandon. It's why you people like you shouldn't be in charge. Because you impose that position of power on everyone else. And I hate it when people do that. I truly hate people like you. Because you're a bunch of cunts. You ruin everything for everybody else. And then when they get mad, you say, go make your own. And that's where my comment comes in. D&D is not racist. Please stop trying to force all media to conform to your ideals and delicate sensibilities. Stop pushing out the people who enjoy it. Go make your own. Just know that every time, you, that like every time you do, it will flop. Every time these people go and make their own, it flops. Every time they come in and ruin something the rest of us love, it flops. Every time they tell us to go make our own. But when they do, when we do, they come and invade it. They come and try to take it away from us again. Wizards, I'm going to tell you right now. You should not be doing a damn thing. Do not change the way orbs are described. Do not listen to this little fucking soy boy. Do not start banning your players for disagreeing with him. Because that will be digging you a hole. And eventually, someone's going to kick you in. And then they're going to fill it. I'm going to tell you that right now. As a company, you do not have the right to dictate the thinking or opinion of your fan base. That goes for YouTube. That goes for Twitch. That goes for Wizards. Fucking Konami. Fucking Microsoft. Everybody. You as a company are supposed to make a fucking product and keep your bullshit to yourself. Let us consume the product. Listen to the people that buy the product and care about the product. Not the people like this guy who don't give a shit about it, who are trying to ruin it. Listen to the people who give you money for your product. Make your product, take their feedback, and shut up. You do not have any right to tell other people what to think. And now that I've had my little rant, and it's actually inspired a full video I'm going to do later, we get to my comment. My response to Brandon. Brandon did not read this response. He simply read the first sentence and decided, oh, time to block him. D&D &D is not racist. Because every time, like I said, these people ruin something we care about. They tell us to go make our own. Then they come and invade it. But then every time we, we tell them to go make their own, they go, no, I want to be a part of this. Because they want to ruin it. And I actually included here this nice little picture here. I love this image. Thank you to the Hitman subreddit for the person who posted this screenshot a year ago. Because this is the fav my favorite meme I've ever made. I've ever made. It is calm, respectful, and just perfect. I see your point of view, but I strongly disagree. 47 disagrees, and so do I. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, orcs are now fucking racist because some little cuck-ass Silicon Valley soy boy who blocks everyone that disagrees with his asinine opinion said so. Because some lesbian feminist with a haircut that makes her look like a cunt said so. Wizards in the Coast, do not listen to these people. Do not continue to employ these people. Do not let them change the world that you wrote back in the fucking 80s just because they have a stick up their ass now. Do not conform and bend the knee. Because if you do, you'll lose money. And if you do, it'll be your own damn fault. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more comment. More, co more comment, yeah. Fucking, I'm so riled up, I can't even talk straight. For more content, and I will see you next time. Please don't forget to check out my Twitch channel, where I often sit, where I often stream late at night on the Eastern Standard Time, playing games with my friends.